All right, we're back with the turd burglar. Let's do this. So today we're gonna tackle one of the most annoying problems that I've had in a while, and that is, I'm pretty sure, a cracked flex plate. Today, we're getting down and dirty and really obnoxious. Ugh. Because we get to play with this guy right here, the flex plate. So, if you have an automatic transmission, like I do this AW4, you have a flex plate. For a manual, it's called a flywheel. I don't think the flywheels usually have these issues, it's usually more the flex plate. So, it's time to man up and pull the friggin' transmission out. So man, is that a lot of fun. Okay, so to get that sucker out, uh, we're gonna obviously have to separate the engine and transmission. For me, the exhaust has got to come out. The exhaust is right over here, all up in this business, and there's no easy way to get the damn thing in and out. So exhaust has to get dropped, we're gonna take those out, cool. Okay, drive shafts, they gotta go because they're connected to the transfer case. After that, we have this cross member that has to get dropped so that we can actually move the transmission out. Uh, there's a bunch of bolts on the transmission that we have to uh, unbolt to separate the engine as well as the flex plate, so don't forget that. Those four bolts have to come out, so, you know, zip them out with whatever, rotate the engine up front with the freaking crank pulley so we can get all four of those out. So once everything's separated, you can pull the transmission back, and then we can get to the bolts on the back of the flex plate to take it off the engine. Yay! And then we get to put it all back together again! Yay! Fucking kill me. So easiest thing first, gonna take the exhaust out. Um, so if you have a factory uh, manifold, the studs are pressed in place and will not come out. You have to remove the nuts. And if you've ever worked on exhaust in your life, you know that they're probably just going to snap. That's a lot of fun. So yeah, take these two bolts out and then we can separate this whole flange and be good to go. Drive shafts are a piece of cake, 5 16th inch uh, friggin' socket. Use a six point for the love of God. These bolts are so soft, you're gonna just destroy them if you use a 12 point. So save yourself the hassle, get a good six point socket set, take them out. Uh, drive shafts will freaking slide out and slop down. So we're gonna do exhaust and drive shafts, so then I'll update with more cursing later. All right, I have to remember to think of my noodle sometimes. We gotta take it off the transfer case end, you derp. So since I got aftermarket shafts, I have 12.5 sixteenths, and I can actually fit one of these ratcheting wrenches on. Dude, this is a friggin' lifesaver, because the other ones with the big bolts, you have to use a, uh, you don't have room for a ratcheting socket. So you do this by hand, and it takes friggin' forever, dude. This takes like a 10, 15 minute job, and, you know, knocks it down to five. And, uh, yeah. And we can always do our little double wrench. This one's a little tiny, so it's a little difficult. I should be using a smaller size, but you can fucking push them together like that so you can get more leverage. Or you can just be strong and do it by hand, whatever. But yeah, gonna take all four of these things out. Fucking throw the thing in neutral so we can spin this shit. I forget if we have to lift the tire. Uh, fucking drivetrain. Okay, so as it would turn out, this drive shaft is basically locked at the, uh, the slip joint. So trying to get that out, what a pain in the ass. But yeah, both sides definitely had to come off and pry and pull and just all kinds of crap. Had this guy set up to catch the one end as I was trying to pull it out because it's just, ugh. Make sure your parking brake's set and you're on flat ground because once you take the drive shaft out, there's nothing holding the thing in. So, yeah, very important. At the very least, block up the tires. Make sure this thing can't roll. The drive shaft is what stops the car because, you know, transmissions and parking and all that crap, right? <sighs> And for the inevitable issue when one of the caps falls, try to make sure that at least you catch all the, uh, the needle bearings and keep any dirt out of there. You know, so that's always fun. This would be a good time to change any U-joints since the drive shafts are out. But yeah, we're just going to take all them out, push them all up against the wall and slide them back in. Uh, fuck magnets. Front drive shaft has been out and removed, so that's easy beans. Transmission and transfer case in neutral. You can jack up one tire and spin the tire and that'll uh, get this to rotate so you can actually get to all the bolts, especially those ones down there. Cool. I got the bolts that hold the exhaust off, so that was fun. Getting one of these guys in here, a little wiggle diggler. Organize your, t uh, your friggin' bolts so you actually know where they go later. Got all the drive shaft stuff, got the exhaust stuff. Yours isn't gonna look like that. Mine's aftermarket, of course. Everything's different on this friggin' thing. 
So now that the exhaust is out and free, uh, next is going to be um, the cross member's got to come out so this can drop down. We got to unbolt all the accessories from it. The uh, linkage cable, all that crap. I don't know. Just, you know, start taking shit apart. <laughs> so, I, I guess we'll just go over it real quick. So, this right here is your shift linkage for the, like, the park shift or the Prindle. This is what does your park reverse neutral drive. Just pop this guy out with, um, you know, just a flathead. Just a ball joint that just popped on there. Uh, and then this thing, um, I think there's two squeezy tabs on there. So you squeeze this side and that side, and this will push through. There's an opening at the top, so it'll just slide through. I tried taking the brackets off last time, and they are stuck on their goods, so... Yeah, pop the linkage. Same with this guy. This one's a pain in the ass, so... Basically, um, we have to take the side off the transfer keys here, pop this out. This side also pops out. If you need more room to play with, take these bolts out, and then you can play with this whole thing, wiggle it, move it, and all that crap, but we can leave the rest, really. It's just that side and that side. Okay, on the passenger side of the transmission, uh, the main things over here are the cooler lines, so we got one and two. They'll have to come undone. They're a real pain in the butt. Uh, again, those are squeezy tabs. In theory, you're supposed to be able to squeeze these, push it in to un unengage it, and then pull it out. That's how it's supposed to work. You'll have two O-rings and a spacer in there. But sometimes they don't like to play well, so you might have to unthread that entire connector, because this entire thing unthreads as well, so you can just undo that. Um, the NSS stays, you don't have to touch that. Uh, the dipstick tube, that thing's going to be a pain in the ass, so we'll have to fuck around with that. Uh, getting, getting it separated the first time is not easy, uh, but yeah, if that comes off, then that's good. All the wiring can stay, all the sensors and all that stay in the transmission. There's two giant wiring harnesses up at the top, unconnect them, and all the wiring is free. We'll have to take the starter out, so I guess we can do that. Um, thing that sucks though is we have to disconnect the positive cable from the battery or negative, whatever, it doesn't matter. Because uh, the, uh, there's a major positive cable that goes to the starter. Can't have that shorting out, so it's really best to disconnect the battery. But that's my music! Okay, so like I said, this just pops right out. Pry bar is great. This side pops out, and that's free. This just slides in and out. That just pops off. So this one over here is a, a little trickier. Uh, I needed to use a pry bar against it, but there's a couple little push tabs that you just push in, and then you push up while you're doing that. So this is free. That'll go. <laughs> Where's some glasses? I'm tired of getting dust in my eyes. Worst part about it, I own a fucking Jeep. Play in the mud for five minutes, and you're fucking cleaning dust off your face for five years. Christ. <laughs> okay. Linkages are now disconnected. Yay! All right, we gotta move farther back. Work out of the way. All right. Back into the transfer case. So you're gonna have your four-wheel drive light. This might be somewhere else. Could be a vacuum thing. If it's the vacuum, you just pull it out. Electrical connector, disconnect it. This is your speedometer cable on newer Jeeps. It'll be an electric uh, connector for us old guys. It's a freaking wire cable. You can just undo this nut and slide the thing out. You don't have to worry about taking this off and all that shit. Just take this outer nut off, pop it out. Easy beans. That should be just about everything on the driver's side. Yep, yeah, every time I hear the word quick disconnect, I just want to laugh a little. Quick disconnect my ass. More like quickly frickin' ruin all your patience. Gave it the old college try for about 10 seconds, gave up. We're gonna do it the easy way. Fuck this thing. Just take the whole fucker out. Save you so much headache. The second it comes off, it'll fall right apart, though. Believe me. Piece of shit. Okay. Easiest method to take the flex plate bolts out. Get yourself a heavy dookie uh, impact. Half inch is nice. 15 millimeter. And you're going to have four of these stupid little things that come out. Real small and tiny. So. You got a little gap over here where you can kind of fit your tools and get one out. Then you put your big, uh, whatever the fucker, wherever he's at. This guy. Put that guy on the crank, rotator crock rise 90 degrees. Get the next one, repeat. Do that. Four bolts, take him out. So now, uh, I think we need to drop the transmission and do the rest of the work here. 
Uh, I have an aftermarket cross member, as you can tell. Uh, the stock one, you're gonna have a bolt and a stud on each side. So you take off one side, take off the other side, and the cross member's free. The um, transmission mount is bolted to the cross member. You can access them through here. There should be four whole uh, bolts. They're all 13 millimeter, so you can buzz them out. Um, be careful, because usually the um, the studs that they use are pretty weak, so even like a small like 3 8 impact like this can uh, snap them off when you're tightening them. I've already done it twice. So yeah, just try to be careful when you're taking them off, but we're gonna take them off. Uh, we're gonna support the transfer case with like a jack or something to keep it, like to lift it up off the cross member, take the weight off the cross member, then drop the cross member. Then we need to finagle our transmission jack under the transmission to support that, and then we can lower it and get to all the bolts and shit. Got all that? Okay. Stacked up, jacked up. We've got lift off. So now that's supported. This jack stand over here to save our ass in case the jack fails. Now we get to unbolt this. So for me, I've got four nuts that are really fun to get to. I can watch this freaking heavy ass thing fall on me. And then once that's done, we can position the real jack. Okay, so cross members out. Beautiful. Make sure that when you uh, go to wiggle this off, either leave one bolt attached on one side or stay clear of the kill zone because mine was like kind of jammed and stuck in there so I started prying on one end, prying on the other and I pried on the, the end holding on my side so that way when the other side let go it fell away from me because it is heavy as shit so now the fun part positioning our jack to make sure that it's uh you know actually holding the weight of the transmission and transfer case properly because this whole fucking situation's a fun little beast to try to hold on to so yeah, try and position that so we can slide it all back. So uh, once we get that set up, we can lower the transmission and start working on the bolts and other bullshit. We're getting there. All right, so if you've not seen one before, this is what a trans jack uh, looks like. It's got a handle and a big flat square thinger, and it's got some knobs so we can dial it around. So I've got it set up kind of like this. So hopefully with the chain on there, the weight should be kind of distributed evenly. I don't know, I kind of wish this uh, plate was even bigger than what it is. There's a safety chain that we're going to wrap around once we get this a little lower, just to hold it in place so that way it doesn't fall off. But for now, we're doing a fun little game of lower this one a bit, lower this one a bit, lower that one a bit, and you know, just to try to get it lower so we can get access to everything. So yeah, uh, now we get to focus on taking the starter out and the bell housing bolts so that one right there is one of the big ones i think so we've got a big one either side we already took the bottom stuff out to get to the cover so the top e-torques those are gonna be fun the e12 i've taken them out before so they should come out um but yeah we're getting there okay these are the two watt connectors up here they're nice and big just unconnect them and that's good um, the other thing is the dipstick, this guy over here, uh, is going to be bolted to the back of the transmission bell housing, so that's going to be fun. Getting there. Okay, there we go, got the other bastard out. So, for that one, 8 inch crescent, just to get in the fucking thing. It's really difficult to get around with all the stuff in the way, but you can get a full little rotation thingy out of it so whatever okay those are off for fuck's sakes so now starter and big bolts cool ah uh, we're so close but so far all right <coughs> starter is removed the bottom bolt is a 14 top bolt is a 15 you're gonna find two of them the one closest to the edge is for the starter about up there is the bell housing to engine don't confuse the two. You need to take off two wires, your starter signal wire there, and your main positive cable here. Um, so I think that was what a five is a half inch and a 15 16 I think. Make sure the battery cable's off before you touch that. That goes right to the battery. Don't fuck yourself. Negative cable is off the battery before we started this. That's a nice leak. I wonder what's uh 
What's leaking over there? Is that the oil filter? Always something leaking on this fucking thing. Uh, so yeah, okay. Now it's just bolts that hold the transmission in. So that big bolt I was just talking about. That one there. Same over here. Big one over there. And I got two up on the top. The two on the top will have to drop the transmission more to get to it. But we are getting there, partner. Okay, so this guy over here is a 5 8 on the back. Front is a 13 millimeter. That guy. And it'll be the same thing on the other side. Take them off. So, dipstick tube. This guy. This is where it separates. Yours is not going to be this loose the first time I had to beat on this motherfucker pretty bad the first time I ever took it out. But now, it's pretty loose. A little WD-40 to open it up. And if I went from the top, you could probably yank that bastard out. So, yeah. Try not to stress out the bottom of the pan over here because you could probably bend this and fuck it up. And You don't want to do that, so don't do that. But anyway, that's that. Yeah, see, we ain't cool, bud. Whew. Tell you the kind of fucking feels I was feeling when I... Whew. They make some interesting noises when they're angry. ay ay ay. That little asshole. Satan's fucking sack. So, guess what happens when you take a dinner break? It fucking monsoons and rains and all your tools are completely underwater. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Not gonna do that again. Guess it's time for my second fucking shower of the night now. Okay, so, <clears throat> now the fun part of actually trying to get this damn thing out of here. So, um, first part, uh, we're gonna use this safety chain over here. I always like to use a little bit of a, like a vice grip or something, because every time you go to take this thing out, the weight shifts, the chain gets loose, it falls off, things like that. And once that chain's off, you don't have any safety, so, you know, have fun trying to catch this monster. So yeah, we're gonna fucking, we got that clipped and we're gonna put it on the other side with that hook and we're gonna hook it down. Uh, need to make sure our breather lines are uh, unattached so we're not yanking them out. And then we can take out the last couple bolts. So yeah, getting there. All right, so a couple things up in the engine bay I forgot about. Uh, one is your throttle valve cable out of the transmission. This guy over here on the edge, this thing you just, you know, pull forward and it'll pop right out of this guy. Squeeze these tabs, push this through. That goes straight to the transmission. Trying to take that out of the transmission, basically impossible. You have to remove the, the pan to get that off. So, take it off from that side. Same with these breather hoses. Mine, these are aftermarket, I extended them, but you should have some breather hoses somewhere over in that area. So you've got breather hoses and the throttle valve cable. Those all have to come with. Got those electrical connections undone. Um, so the only thing I didn't get to yet is the freaking um, the dipstick tube. So we gotta pull that damn thing out. And then uh, we can get to them bolts. I think one of the Torx bolts is <laughs> already missing out of the transmission. So the easiest way to see these... Uh, bring it to the back. <laughs> okay. And we're just gonna look right up in there. So, you can see our CPS sensor on the left over there. We've got an open hole on the left. The top one doesn't get a bolt. And the one on the right is one of the torques, but it looks like it's coming out, maybe? Or almost out? I think the only thing holding it is that hose, so I must have not torqued that down well enough last time, because they backed out. Which is weird, because the uh, the bigger bolts, one of them one of them backed out a while ago, too. Uh, like a long time ago, I replaced it, so... I guess we finally get to uh, replace those Torx bolts with regular bolts, because I gotta go buy more. So yeah, make sure you really, really torque them down, otherwise they'll back out on you, and uh, you don't want your transmission to come out. Wouldn't it be funny if this is the reason why my flex plate was broken? <laughs> Yay! So if memory serves, this is what we're gonna need right here. Nice impact star socket for these uh, E size. They're inv uh, inverted Torx. So uh, yeah, they're they're nice and fun. If memory serves, the uh, bell housing bolts are E12. And you know, don't, don't toss the entire set because the E8s are useful when you have to uh, tighten up your steering column. Ask me how I know that. So yeah, we're gonna E12 that out. And uh, yeah, if you got a bunch of extensions, go to town. 
long arms make it a little harder to reach things I could reach before, so we're just gonna have to go all the way from the back. Buzz it out with a little ooga dooga action. Okay, so this is where the rubber meets the road or the transmission meets your face, depends how prepared you are. So, the engine is obviously not gonna be supported in the back, so we need to add a third point. That's what this guy is. So that's under the oil pan, keep the engine up. Now, you wanna leave one of these as your last bolt to take out. So those top bolts were actually already removed, just floating around in there, so that's great to know. So the second that I finally disengaged this, the whole transmission dropped about a quarter of an inch, and you know, I'm pretty sure the, uh, the engagement pins are out. So I think the transmission's already basically disconnected. It's a little hard to tell. Yeah, we got a nice gap there, so. Transmission's basically free. <laughs> so yeah, that was fun. Um, this was the only bolt that was really holding it all together. So make sure it's easy to get to and either out of the kill zone when that thing's ready to let loose. So now that the engine is where it needs to be. We got a transmission jack uh, set up. All of our hoses and things. By the way, that's where that dipstick drain tube disconnects from. All of our wires, lines, and shit are ready to come out with. Not getting caught in anything, watch out for that CPS, the thing likes to hit shit and break, and that's never fun when that's broken. So, uh, yeah, I guess we can uh, remove our safety shit and see if we can lower the transmission. Oh, boy. Okay. That 13 mil, kind of important. All that does is hold the dust shield to the block. But the dust shield is in between the flex plate and the engine, so it does technically gonna hold everything together, just barely. Okay, so now the plate has been pushed towards the end. Okay, and the transmission's free. Alright, let's get out of the kill zone here. Okay, so if we do a little, little shim shaking. Oh yeah, okay, we're fairly balanced. Alright. Let's see if we can do this here. Going, uh, down? Okay, yeah, so if you saw that, I can pivot this transmission up. So we can pivot it. And then if I had... Oh, okay. Perfect. Pivot and push. The thing is I want the jack to go. So we're going to put a pry bar under this wheel and push this. Okay. Come on. Let's go cranky. We need a motorized one of these things. Come on, you fuck. Okay. Well, there you have it. Transmission's free. Smooth sailing, partner. Easy does it. Okay, so if you didn't die doing that, <coughs> then you should have found your prize. Yay! Uh, so there's a transmission. This is that wonderful torque converter everyone keeps talking about. Gives you the lockies and all that good stuff. So. And just like any good Haynes man you would say, installation is reverse of removal. Thanks. Alright. Speak of the devil. This thing is useful sir, for uh, some stuff. So if we look over here, flex plate to drive, flex flywheel or drive plate bolts is 105 foot pounds. So yeah, you're gonna wanna crank them down. And uh, I'm gonna add some blue Loctite just so that they stay in there. So we don't ever want them coming out. That would be a real problem. Okay, beautiful. All right, flex plate is all torqued up. Yay. Ugh. Yeah, method worked pretty well. Can't complain. Okay, so just in case we ever need to look at this, that is about how big that is. 
So that is an inch and three quarters long. And uh, yeah, that's the glorious E12 right there. What a pain in the ass. Let's see what size it is. I'd love to get a replacement, but uh, it's Memorial Day. So the damn fucking Ace Hardware is closed, but I'm gonna assume it's a three Ace. And uh, whatever freaking regular thread size that is. So I was able to find a couple of replacement bolts wherever the hell I just put them down at. Oh, there we go. This one's too short, and this one's longer, but it should be fine, because all this is uh, bell housing. So there's a pretty big, thick bit of bell housing, and then the rest is threads. This one we get about two or three threads on, but not, not ideal. So I'd rather have a little longer, and if it's too long, we'll just chop off a little bit. So I'll run that in there and just get this done, because I need this uh, back together. CPS removed, just in case. We all know how freaking sensitive these things are. Make sure the cooler lines don't get stuck. Make sure the shift line doesn't get stuck. Make sure none of the freaking things are where they shouldn't be. Ugh. Does the speedometer cable have to go anywhere? Important. Since we're tilting it back, let's get our safety up. Okay, so that was step one. I don't know if you could see that, but I had to get the bell housing around the flex plate. So now, kind of just squeeze them back together. So there's two alignment dowel pins on either side. That should help you get it lined up. I'm actually surprised with how well this thing is. Uh, willing to work with me right now. It's the fact that I can move it by hand that's insane. Okay, so this is how we're gonna do this seat. We're gonna take our big bolt here. It's gonna be our alignment. I'm trying to get both sides of the uh, metal freaking plate. You know the fun part is just kind of Gently caressing this until it wants to go in. Now to help us along, I'm going to attempt to try to tighten this bolt. Then we'll move over to the other side. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, cool. We're going to move over to the other side so we can get that other bolt started. So, let's see if we can do this. There you go. Look at that. She just went right in there. Hell yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. Okay, so yeah, trying to get to those bolts up at the top are gonna suck, but I guess it's possible with some extensions and creative yoga, so, you know, do whatever works. Uh, all right, well now that those are kind of good, I mean, they still gotta get torqued. Uh, it's just the two front ones, those little 13s, but we gotta put the dipstick back on to do this side. That side just is the, uh, the cover. Um, I'm wondering if we should rotate the flex plate and see if we can at least get some of the bolts in that. Get that started before we get everything too snug. But yeah, once all those bolts are good and everything's all where it needs to be, nothing's crushed, um, then we can jack the transmission up and put the cross member back on and really get this thing going. So, yeah man, we're looking good. I like the progress we're making. Okay, dipstick. That's another important one you want to kind of put back. Clean it real good, WD it, and it should pop in there. So I put it in through the top, 
make sure that there's nothing between the uh, engine and that. Make sure everything, like all the hoses and whatever, outside, outboard. Then I went underneath, lined it up, pushed it in a little bit, make sure that that bracket's in the front. And then at the top, I took a punch, uh, a big fat punch that fit over the top of this, and then just slowly tapped it until it went down. It doesn't have to tap in very far. You wanna make sure that that bolt hole lines up, because I'm pretty sure that's what set your actual dipstick uh, height. So, yeah, doesn't have to go in very far. So now that that's done, that's all the bolts on the, the housing stuff that doesn't concern the flex plate cover. So, yeah, okay. Now we can jack this thing back up. Okay, so our starter is now in. Tight, got all the wire connections and all that crap, so that's good. So now we can move over here, and uh, I think that's everything. So we can start jacking up. Just want to make sure that this guy is pushed in all the way and it's not going to get caught. It's got to uh, interface with this uh, bushing over here. Make sure this guy over here is not going to get caught. It's got to go slide back into there. And make sure your uh, CPS isn't going to bang against anything. But uh, if all that's looking good, you can start jacking. Speedo cable is where it needs to be too. Where the hell that's going to sit. There. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. So now the fun part of... Um, switching so we have this set up again and safety just in case it's as high as that thing goes uh, so I got the chain off we're gonna lower this so that way the weights on this then we're gonna put the, um, the transmission mount on and then when the mounts on then we can put the cross member on and we can lower the jacks okay cross member mount is on be now if you notice I have these massive fucking washers because the last two mounts that I had, they crack right around that area. So I'm using that washer as a reinforcement. So far, it's been holding up great. So yeah. It needs a little more meat there so the damn mounts don't freaking break and flop off. Um, okay, so, pro tip. This linkage right here, you don't have to worry about if that's popped in there yet, but it's good to at least make, it, make sure it's in position. But put this in before you do the cross member. Nine times out of ten, this stupid thing is going to be hanging down, and when you put the cross member on, this can no longer slide up and get to this area. So you're going to have to take it all apart or do some dumb shit, and it sucks messing around with that thing. So do this before you put the cross member on. It's going to save you a lot of headache. Okay, so cross member, yeah, that's going to be fun. The stock ones are easy because they're light. This one's fucking heavy, and it's really hard to get to blind bolts. Man, would I love fucking studs. Mm. Okay, let's wrestle that on there. Oh yeah, pro tip number two. Don't forget your fucking exhaust. That kind of has to go on before the uh, cross member tail. Uh, yeah. Good thing I didn't get any of the bolts in yet. Hmm. Guess I'm gonna freaking uh, weld up some holes real quick then. Okay. So, I hired the local pigeon to come over and shit all over this, so uh... Now the top is fully covered again, so now the only muffler leak we have is this giant crack underneath. So maybe it'll sound a little less like shit now. Okay. So now uh, I guess I need to figure out how the fuck I'm going to wrangle that into there and uh, get the cross member bolted up. Alright, after a lot of juggling and bullshit later, finally. Cool. Uh, I need a better system for that or something. It's ridiculous. Uh, okay, do what you gotta do, man. Let's jack it up and put this damn thing in. Today is not my day. I'm pretty sure that the logo has to go on the front. So I put it on backwards. That's probably why it's not lining up. <sighs> okay. So yeah, when you have the logo on straight, it, uh, it works properly, so... Cool. Alright, all that shit is snug down. Definitely easier with a, a jack, so, uh, yeah. Are you ready for the moment of truth? If we did everything right, we shouldn't die. So... Oh, that's funny. This jack wasn't even really holding it. I guess, uh, we did pretty good then. Not dead. <laughs> okay. 
Now we can tighten up these uh, nuts, wherever the hell they're at. Okay. So once we tighten that, the transmission is uh, connected to the vehicle again. We can use a pry bar actually. Let's do that now. Pry bar onto this guy. And that pops into place, and there we go. We got a shift linkage again. Uh, I hope my fucking, uh... Okay, cool. I don't think my speedometer cable's stuck. Yay. Alright. Let me get a speedo cable. Alright. Very nice. So, transmission bolts. And uh, then I'm going to see if I can do the flex plate before it uh, fucking rains. So, okay. Alright, 13 mil snugs them up. Like I said, you do not want to run them down with an impact. Those studs on those mounts are very, very brittle. Again, a little dinky 3 ace impact can snap them like a twig. So, you know, just, just get them snug. Don't go overboard. Okay, cool. That is that. Excelente. We can put our uh, little shifter doodicker in here now. So that'll, uh... Oh, fucking... Come on. Do a little bit like that. I think. No, no, no. Other way around. It goes like... Like this. There we go. And then you gotta pull the frickin' pinchy things through. Whatever, you get the idea. Pull it through, push this back in. Your shifter's hooked up. Okay, so now the fun part of trying to line up the uh, flex plate and torque converter. Um, I was thinking about doing that when I was trying to put it in, but it's just, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, this one's gonna be a bit tricky. We got our big wrench on the, uh, the crank pulley. But, um, I don't know if I can really get you where I need to be. But when we turn the, um, the engine, the flex plate follows, but so does the torque converter, I think. So we'll have to figure out what we can do to, uh, stop the torque converter spinning. It's lining up with one of the balancing holes, but... Uh, it doesn't really help us with the rest of them. I'll let you know if I figure something out. It's going to be interesting. Alright, cool. I think I got lucky. <laughs> I just spun it and then I started noticing when I, once I got to this side that um, it finally, um, the torque converter was staying still. I think these bolts get 40 foot-pounds, so not a whole lot. But to make sure they don't back out, I'm going to put some blue Loctite on there. Because this isn't one of those things you want to have fall out on you. Because these bolts are kind of hard to find. They're special bolts. You can't just put any old bolt in there. Um, so yeah, all right. Loctite it. And I'm not going to torque that one down yet because I want to get them all in and then we torque them. All right. Finally something smooth here. All right. On the crank pulley there. So we want our bolt to be in that area right there, right past the thing. It's gonna get oh, fucking bugs. The resistance is gonna change as you're going through compression strokes, but all right, get it right there. Now we're gonna take this and flip it around so that it's loosening it. We're gonna use this to hold against the engine, and then with our other hand, we're gonna take our torque wrench. Set to 40 foot pounds and uh, slop that on there. It's a lot easier when you have a flex exhaust, you can just bend out of the way. It's fucking great, man. Beautiful. All right, there we go. All get there. Torque converter, this friggin' torque down. Drivetrain is basically done now. All I have to do is put the cover back on. Um, 
exhaust and drive shafts, but as you can hear, it's about to get pretty shitty. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to call it before I take an unexpected shower. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Cool. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so we can bring our CPS up and plug it in. Try and make sure that it stays away from the exhaust manifold, because uh, if you melt that wire, you're going to have a really bad day. Okay, and that's all in there and all good and stuff. Got the, uh, oh god, the bugs are terrible right now. I give up. Okay. Um, alright, so we've got the speedometer cable. Make sure that the square drive index is on the, um, the input shaft properly. Because if the, that little square cable doesn't go in properly, then your speedometer's not going to read. So, yeah, make sure that's in there. Snug it up. Same with the, uh, four-wheel drive light. There we go. Cool. Now we're just going to put the exhaust on and drive shafts. Yay! New deck. Alright, so uh, loose ends are uh, finally tightened up. We got the uh, the cover back on. Um, so that's just a couple bolts, 18s and 13s. It's literally, it's just an inspection cover, so nothing important there. Got the transmission lines uh, bolted and not touching things. So, now the fun part of the exhaust. Uh, not really too many tips I can give you here, especially since mine is uh, different and very custom but um yeah make sure your donut's good good time to replace it if uh it's falling apart i'm gonna reuse mine because it doesn't really all the angles are fucked up anyway um but one life lesson you should really learn is exhaust bolts suck it rusts so bad and it's almost impossible to get off so if you are ever lucky enough to take it apart <laughs> and uh you'd like to reuse it and not curse and scream and snap it. Use some gosh darn anti-seas, okay? Seas is bad, okay? Because exhaust sucks on hardware. Seriously, it just destroys it. Anti-seas, for the love of God, if you ever want to get these apart again. So yeah, besides that, we're just going to chuck it all together and see how this goes. Okay, beautiful. This is starting to look like something again. O2 sensors plugged in. Good to go. I added those springs to hopefully maybe uh, prevent cracking. I try to add a little bit of flexibility in my exhaust, so got springs there. I don't know how much they're actually doing, but I don't know. And then we got this guy. Dude, this is awesome. I love these little flexi tube things. It's so much easier to work on the exhaust because you can bend it around and stuff. These are godsends, man. Add one of these in if you can. And it should save a lot of other things, so yeah. Lots of exhaust support and flexibility. Helps keep things from cracking. <laughs> All right, cool. We're done to the last step. Putting the shafts in. So I WD'd the crap out of that one to try to finally get that one moving, beating it back and forth with a hammer. This long, like the large spline one, it's great, man. It just slides out, you know, back and forth like butter. Uh, but yeah, since they're out, might as well uh, get your grease gun out. And uh, take care of these damn things, because you know you don't grease them as much as you should. So this is what the normal uh, ball and socket uh, design looks like. So like these, these style right here, this grease fitting takes this little thing, you just pop it on there, make sure to apply a little pressure and squeeze some grease in there. I usually do like four to five squirts. Or if you start seeing the black goop come out of the seals, you don't want to overfill them because that kind of fucks up the seals. But uh, for the other grease fittings like these guys, these are your uh, needle or uh, flush mount fittings. So. We got one there, we got one in the center H joint. Same here, one there, one there. This nice thing about Adam shafts, they give you a bunch of greasable joints. Yay, we like that. So this is your needle fitting. Same exact uh, idea. You just push real hard against the middle and give her some squirts. Uh, if you're not properly sealed on it, all your stuff's gonna start coming out the side instead. So make sure you're dead on and actually giving it the right pressure. So yeah, we've got one U joint, two U joint, focus you fuck we've got one u joint two u joint three u joint then we have our h joint over here and our slip yoke there so that is a total of five grease fittings on this damn thing so yeah once they're all greased i usually um i do the uh the slip joint when it's installed because otherwise when you compress it all the grease comes out the end so that's the point and just be careful on the the open sides because if you grease them too much the caps are going to pop off so you don't want that but a little grease helps hold them together, so, you know. Okay, enough yamming. Let's jam them in. 
Okay, Jeep has successfully been shafted. So, um, just quick tips. It's easier to do this side first because when you put the uh, transfer case in neutral, you can free spin this so you, you connect the two sides, spin it, connect the other two sides. Um, and then what you can do is uh, put it into four wheel drive or something like that to uh, lock it down, tighten the first two, uh, neutral, flip it, four wheel drive, tighten it, and that'll hold the shaft in place. Put it back in a neutral so you can spin it to match the yoke over there, and then that should be fine. The, the bolts over there do their job. Same with this side. You know, you get to the bottom two, spin it, do the others, and uh, four-wheel drive keeps it in place. Then you can extend and do this one. Six-point sockets are a must for these bolts. They're really soft, and it's really easy to round the head. I actually just replaced one. You're supposed to uh, get new ones, but I take this damn thing out so many damn times. I just, it's not worth it for me. So, you know, understand, you know, how tight they should be and when the bolts are needing to be replaced. But there you go, drive shaft is in, and um, if I'm not mistaken, I think we're done. You can hook up the battery and fire this puppy up. Holy cow. Six months of knocking and pain finally gone. Oh, God. Jeeps. Okay, so we got our battery cable uh, reconnected, so everything's all nice and good there. Um, the only thing we got to remember is we have to replace any transmission fluid that leaked out. Um, but yeah, everything is good. Screw it. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we blow up. Part one. Ignition on. Let's see what Rem Rem has to say. My code's found. Cool. All right. Do she crank? Oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, boy. She starts and she runs. We did it. A little bit of a rattle tattle thumper somewhere, but that's just uh you know like pushing vibration stuff. Got a little smoke, but that's expected from all the transmission fluid that leaked all over the exhaust. Yeah, it really just sounds like exhaust farts. Yeah, exhaust is rattling against the uh transmission, possibly. Besides that though, cool. Well, I can't complain, man. She's back together. We'll have to take it on a long drive to know for sure, but she's Gucci, man. Hell yeah, brother. Woo! Oh man, she is back. Oh, I'm so happy. It is good to be back. Ugh.